Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Red Pill Religion on our backup channel, since we are currently still censored and not able to stream on our main channel. Welcome to Red Pill Religion, where we say you do not have to be religious. That doesn't mean you get to lie about history, science, and religious people. So please support our work. You will find us on redpillreligion.com, where you'll also find that you can give us our, your financial as well as your spiritual support. We take PayPal, Bitcoin, Maker Support, and we're probably going to rejoin Patreon um, with a new campaign. Probably look for us to do that. Notice on our website we've got new stuff appearing every day, our own videos, other people's videos sometimes, articles, etc. So please feel free to uh, submit anything you'd like to see appear on our website. Please find us on Gab AI at Red Pill Religion. Find us on Maker Support at Red Pill Religion. Find our Discord chat room, which we have a link to in the low bar. Feel free to come by and say hi. Even if you're an atheist, just uh, try and be polite. We'd be happy to have you come in and talk to us. Okay, everybody, tonight we're going to do somebody that I've been waiting more than a year, uh, two years, really, to try doing a response video to. The ever-famous Matt Dillahunty, as well as Dan, it's Dan Baker, right, of the Freedom From... John. Huh? Don Barker. Barker. Don, Don Baker. Don Baker. I'm sorry. I, I got that name totally wrong. We even had a response video uh, article series that uh, John Bosco wrote in our blog. I'm sure he didn't ever respond to him, but um, in any case, joining me tonight on this little adventure um, are, well, first off, our friend uh, Comrade Dimitri, a.k.a. Robert, who, whose idea this was, he wanted to take this on. T say hi to everybody, Robert. Zedrithvuti. That's hello in Russian. Excellent. Well, thank you, Robert. Robert's a historian. Um, also joining us, Engine, who has his own uh, YouTube channel. Go look for it and subscribe to it. Say hi to everybody, White Engine. Buongiorno. And also joining us is our friend, Mr. Brass. Say hi to everybody, Mr. Brass. Hello there, everyone. By the way, just so everybody notes, uh, we have two deists, i.e. non-Christians, a Christian uh, secular theist with his own, with, 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 with uh, interesting religious views of his own, and I, of course, am the dirty Catholic in the room. So, I mean, that's who we are. Again, I tell anybody, especially from atheist experience who's wondering, we do not run Christian apologetics here. We are critics of the atheist movement, and we welcome anybody else who's a critic of the atheist movement, who's an honest critic. Also, I will note, by the way, this is the appearance of the new and improved Max of Michigan. I, I am going to be true to my word. We are changing the tone. We'd already been talking about changing the tone. I'm, this is the new Max. I'm going to be now with less swearing. And a uh, 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 less 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 below the belt uh, action. Uh, however, uh, we're still not going to be that nice on them. I'm actually pleased that we're finally getting around to Dillahunty. I never wanted to start uh, with Matt Dillahunty. I figured we wanted to get a a a, a season or two um, picking off the lower fruit before we went up to Dillahunty. But I'm really making, looking forward. Just so you know, Matt Dillahunty and Mr. Baker, I was an atheist for decades. It was a part of your movement. I was reading American Atheist magazine back in the 80s when Madeline Murray O'Hare, that crazy, crazy old witch. Oh, my friend Autumn Storm won't like that I called her a witch. Well, we'll just spell it with a B. Um, who abused her children and her family it was still running things. I have no respect for American atheists. The Freedom from Religion Foundation. Or okay, is, is it um, is it Don Baker or Dan Barker? Man, am I Don kidding? Baker? It's Don Baker. Who the hell is Dan Barker? There is a Don Dan Barker. Sorry, Don, Dan Baker. Don Baker is the president of the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Oh, that's why my brain is doing that. So that's not the Freedom from Religion guy. I'm sorry. Then I just don't know who this guy is. Um, sorry. he's one of the Dillahunty top henchmen. <laughs> Okay, okay, I thought he, okay, that's all right. Well, I don't watch the Atheist Experience that often, to be honest. No, Dan, no, Dan uh, Barker is this, um, this fundamentalist turned atheist preacher. Well, there's no, your they're going to get pissed. There, sir, because you went from the dumbest, high, the, the, the most illiterate and, and least informed and least educated form of Christianity 
to the most historically and scientifically illiterate movement, intellectual movement on the scene today, which would be organized atheism. As a former atheist, I, I urge you to get out and become a Taoist or a really serious uh, uh, Buddhist who actually studies the these things. Please restart the Stoic religion. Anything makes more sense than either your hardcore fundamentalist, biblical, literalist, of uh, BS Christianity or this BS of atheism. Just saying, happy to help you out any time. Um, you probably get a new career and have a lot more friends and fun that way too. Um, oh God, just be a Taoist, please. All right. So anyway, um, why don't we go ahead and dive into this? We'll do about a minute at a time. We're only going to go from what is it, fifteen? No, it's um. Hold on. About four minutes and five seconds to about the fifteen twenty-eight moment because we can't do this whole thing. So, all right, is, uh, and, and you will find the link in the low bar to go look at the whole thing if you think we're being, you know, we missed anything important. I doubt it. So here we go, recoveringfromreligion.org. I recovered from atheism, and I didn't even become a Christian, by the way, not right away. So talk to me about that sometime, why don't you? Because really, atheism is just as narrow-minded and dumb as that weird version of Christianity you left, sir. See, I'm already ranting, but I'm being nicer. Um... Okay, why don't we go ahead and start this, and we'll try and give it at least a minute. Um, let's see how far we can get. Tell us about the Dark Ages. <laughs> okay, well, I, I've, I've been doing a long series on the failures of Christianity, and today is the 24th failure show. So uh, still, Let's, still let's not call it a failure show. <laughs> a failure show. It's a, a show, a show fail, about, fail, about failures, right? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of failures, and uh, it begs the question of, how, you know, if your God's on your side, uh, why are you why are you having so much trouble with this? Um, I saw a bumper sticker, and it's kind of based on uh, this this uh, wonderful quote from Ruth Hermanence Green. Hermanence Green. Uh, she was an author of the Born Again Skeptic's Guide to the Bible in 1997, so it's an early earlier uh, new atheist. Uh, her quote was. There was a time when religion ruled the world. It was known as the Dark Ages. Well, that's and, a lot. And that's kind of the gist of the show. The Middle Ages was a period between the fall of the Roman Empire and the Renaissance from the 5th to the 15th century, also known as the Dark Ages. Which it was uh, one of some of the big events, Constantine becomes, becomes Roman em emperor and Christianizes the declining empire. And you know, oh. even though the empire was in decline. Christianity was was there and largely unopposed, and had all sorts of power for ten plus centuries. So, um, there's this wonderful Bible quote: "From their fruits ye shall know them." So, what did they do with their power? What did you know? Let's should we stop him there? Or should we give him another minute to go on with what I already um, there? Be a bunch of. I, 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 I got a quote to reverse that: "He who lives by the sword will die by the sword." What is that significance to what he just said there, though? About that the church was this medieval Gestapo, and that um, oh life, yeah, life sucked for everybody, and the big bad church was behind every bad thing that ever happened. I, 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 it's a ridiculous on multiple multiple levels. I'm sure he's going to try and give us more examples, but uh, I'll go ahead and pull up a couple of examples uh, of literature here, which I'll try and get linked in the low bar. Uh, uh, from incredibly, from completely credible uh, historical sources. I'm going to pull up two books right now that we'll probably get back to, and if people have other books for them, that would be good too. The, is one of them God's Philosophers? Yes, it is. And the other is How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization. If now, I also I'm, may add something, like the whole person that they point to wasn't even a historian like Ruth, um, Ruth um, Green. She wasn't a historian. She was a journalist who, who you know, as you could tell, so she has really no, she had no credentials in there. This is common. And I should note, by the way, that if you read The New Atheist Denial of History by Borden W. Painter, whom we have interviewed, let me pull that up too, The New Atheist Denial of History, Morton Painter has an excellent record at debunking Holocaust deniers and other weird historical revisionists. In fact, he was the winning historical expert in a UK libel trial, which is almost impossible to win, but he did. He's a real expert on people who use fake methodologies to gin up fake history. 
And he shows very clearly in the new atheist denial of history that that's what these guys all do. They engage in Nazi style propaganda and, and communist style propaganda, fascist style propaganda, both types. Um, same kind of stuff that the Holocaust denialists do. That, the, that all of the big new atheists, Christopher, especially Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, all did this. And one of the things they all did is that they would quote sources that were not historians or not even experts saying things exactly like you just described him doing here. He quotes this lady as if she's somebody authoritative when really she's just a journalist. And I'm going to guess just another atheist who's part of the atheist cult network. By the way, it is a cult network. That's what Freedom From Religion Foundation is. That's what American Atheists is. And that's what the atheist experience is part of. A cult network that spreads phony history like they're just about to do here. Let me mention these three books. The New Atheist Denial of History. Um, How the Catholic Church West, Western Civilization, which is, by the way, let's be real clear what is meant by Catholic Church here. Um, this includes some of the reformers when the reformers and Protestants came along. But I mean, this actually is a good book to debunk claims that the Dark Ages were all that dark. Another one that helps uh, debunk the claim that the Dark Ages were dark is James Hannum's God's Philosophers, How the Medieval World Laid the Foundations for Modern Science. And contrary to atheist mythology, all right, whoever's got that sound going, please mute yourself. Um, contrary to atheist mythology, and this, this is absolutely ideological atheist mythology, the so-called Dark Ages were actually a very exciting time. Slavery died down, um, and, and uh, arts and sciences and commerce, and peaceful trade began. Um, quite a bit of, of philosophical and scientific and other work uh, that we thought didn't happen, did. It's been re-uncovered over the last few decades. Historians haven't actually given any credence to the phrase dark ages in probably 40, 50 years at least, because we've discovered, you know, what really happened during the so-called dark ages was that use of Latin was no longer universal. So a lot of what was happening culturally, because it wasn't in Latin, we didn't have it all. But over the decades, we've compiled stuff from all these different countries and regions and translated it. And we found out, no, the so-called Dark Ages were full of interesting things, scientific discoveries and trade and exploration and a whole lot more. The Dark Ages no, were not. No historian, worth his, no historian worth his salt even uses that term. I know. No, they, they, refer, huh? they refer to it as pejorative. And I wanted to say something about um, this Ruth um, Ruth Green chick, or you know journalist. Um, she uses a uh, she uses that um, infamous oh when religion ruled the world um, it was known as the Dark Ages, which is ironically in um, an atheist version of the of the um, English Protestant when the Pope ruled the the middle or when the Pope ruled them was called the Dark Ages. What I'm saying is that, you know, I don't get it what, when, the perp, when the Pope, what? Oh, you're just saying they're just kind of uh, mimicking the old <laughs> Anglican line that everything was oppression when there was a Pope and then Henry the yeah, VIII. The it's the Protestant line. And, and and actually serious Protestants no longer buy that line. Yeah. They recognize there were problems on both sides, both the Catholic side and the reformer side. And there was corruption on both sides and bad feelings on both sides. And nobody wants to fight anymore. Um, but yeah, a lot of what these atheists do, these these activist American atheist derived um, uh, people like Bill Hunty and his friends, they are relying on easily debunked pseudo history, and nobody calls them on it. Um, yeah, I'll just point out that. Try and claim that I'm calling out you on it purely because of my my religion. I've got two non Christians here, and another definite non Catholic here, all telling you you're full of crap. And we're citing perfectly respectable historians and mainstream sources, not all of them Catholic. Get over it, guys. You're lying about the Dark Ages. Why don't you educate yourself and stop miseducating your audience? It would be nice. Who else wants to add, say something add, before we move on? Huh? Yeah, if I may yeah, add something. Like, like, the dark, Go ahead. The dark you know, the Engine, dark ages were not that, were not that like... It, Bad in terms of like inventions and stuff because. Well, you speak up, Brass. 
like things like the water mill, um, eyeglasses, bla the blast furnace, the spinning wheel, the universities, the chartered towns, all of those things were um, came about during the Dark Ages. And you had philosophies because like, you know, like Dante's Inferno that came out and um, Thomas Aquinas' work. Thomas Aquinas' work, which influenced uh, all of science, including the science we do now, by the way, whether contemporary scientists recognize it or not. Yeah, I mean, the Dark Ages simply weren't dark. You, you, you're, you're dealing in a myth here, man. There was a ton of things happening. And by the way, it was the church building the universities, not controlling them, literally coming up with the ideas and building them. Because the Christians were the first and the only ones to say that universal education was a good idea. They considered it a Christian mission. Just so you know, nobody had that idea. And it, uh, 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 the Christians invented that too. All right, let's see if we can get another minute or so of this, because I'm sure he's going to start giving us a bunch of specifics, and this should be fun. No, what, completely unopposed. What sorts of wonderful things did Christians do? Isn't well, this the period of time where there was just massive scientific discovery and improved health care and just yes, no? Yes, no? It was. Okay. Yes, not that. it was. Uh, they did do some good art, art and architecture, but that was kind of uh, bribes, I think, for uh, the uh, um, bribes? purgatory. They, they could, the, the, the right. artists could go through purgatory and selling indulgences. Indulgences, was right. That was another. Please, please give us specific citations on that. You know, the selling of indulgences was an embarrassment, but it didn't last that long at that level of corruption, sir. Why don't you give? Why don't you prove that extraordinary claim that that's what drove most of the art and architecture? I don't think you can. Please prove that extraordinary claim. Citation needed, as the saying goes. All right, let's keep going. Thing. So nothing particularly great came out of the Dark Ages. So I want to look at three. I wonder if that's why we call them the Dark, the Dark Ages. Ages. That's right. Why? I want to look at three initiatives of the Dark Ages. I want to, the suppression of pagans and heretics, the Crusades, and the destruction of knowledge. And there are many more events. Of course. Please provide citation for this destruction of knowledge, and please provide citation for how it was Christians' fault for <laughs> same. Also, please justify your position that the Crusades were entirely a bad thing and nothing good came of them, and that they were in no way justified or not, and, and simply bad. Please justify not that with anecdotes from this, that, or the other time. Please explain in realistic fashion why the Crusades as a whole were unmitigated evil and should not have happened. Why? Please explain. Imagine a, <clears throat> imagine a 1950s fetishist calling art era. <clears throat> The crap ages. Yeah, well, yeah, or uh, really, I mean, no, we just showed you with references your audience can check. Everything you said about the Dark Ages is a lie, sir. All of it. Um, You're full and, of crap. You know, and like this is just Whiggish history, you know. Um, Whiggish? Robert will know about you know, Whiggish, you know, Robert well, I know will know that. Mean, well, I know what Whiggish means. I just don't know what you mean. What's Whiggish about it? W-H-I-G. Well, Whiggish, well yeah. Whiggish history, they tend to they tend to look at history in terms of progress, and they look at it pretty poorly, Whigs have. Um, oh, I see. You know, so, no, like, historians tend to not try to view things in progress, and they tend to try to view things like in empathy in yes. the moment. Yeah, it's oftentimes um, referred to as, um, or in more modern times, it's referred to as the secularization thesis, or, you know, the myth of progress, which is the idea that, you know, as society progresses and becomes more modern and industrialized, religion just loses ground for some reason. And that's not entirely true at all. No, it's not. In fact, history proves over and over again that religion goes through peaks and valleys and religious revivals happen. And oh, by the way, if you hadn't noticed, guys, uh, wait a minute, who's causing the echo? Having too many technical issues. Um, I'm muting everybody. Now I forgot what I was just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I just saying, guys? Uh, uh, the, the, uh, oh, yes. We're in the middle of a religious revival in Europe, in Asia, in in North America. Uh, uh, we're in the middle of a religious revival, which if you understood, you know, history, you would know was very predictable. 
There is no way you can make religion go away. It's normal in human beings. And you can't beat it out of them, and you can only educate, i.e. indoctrinate them out of it for so long before they go off the reservation. It's just a scientific reality. Hope you guys are dealing with the religious revival well, because it's going to become more and more obvious as time goes on that we're in the middle of one. And I mean in Europe, not just here in America, Canada too. Uh, just about everywhere in the world, we're in the middle of one, actually. Russia is um, always getting Russia is always getting some new Orthodox churches that are very beautiful. Russian Orthodoxy, yeah. After seventy years of atheist indoctrination and after brutal repression and fake propaganda against them, they're growing like wildfire again. Nobody cares because nobody wants the atheism anymore. They're only about six percent genuine atheist over there, by the way. Well, uh, not much more than over here. And that's because atheism is kind of an hysterical, emotional opinion that has no rational basis. Just thought I'd mention that for you guys. Um, don't have to be a Christian to see that, by the way. Uh, let's see. This is like 10 centuries. Good grief. There's lots of, lots of stuff, but I wanted to point these out. Uh, the suppression of pagans and heretics. Well, Rome was a melting pot of conquered cultures uh, in the heyday, and it, it had a mixture of religions. Um, those that were non-Christian were kind of branded as pagan or lumped together altogether. Um, and the religious tolerance that existed under most of the Roman rule vanished uh, at, at the end there and, and, and under Constantine and, and those. Uh, the later, a later emperor, Theodosius, uh, stepped up the destruction of pagan practices and buildings starting in 383. Um, Constantine and Theodosius were considered godly emperors serving the church and crushing its enemies. Not being honest uh, here. Under, Cause that sounds really, you know, let's crush our enemies. Right. Right. In the love of Jesus. In the love of Jesus. Right. So, so not being honest, around this gentlemen. time we had the council of Nicaea canonizing certain texts and practices, making a whole lot of Christians heretics. Let's go ahead and stop there. They're just they're ignorant. Ignorant. They are just ignorant. Why don't we talk about their ignorance? Robert, why don't you talk about their ignorance on Roman history here? Because it's pretty bad. Oh, boy. My, my history isn't even all that good. And I could tell they're, they're <laughs> this is a dumpster fire because here's the thing. There's, well, um, there's, academia, there's academia. Let me speak. There's academia from um, archaeologists. Um, they did investigations into surviving relics and artifacts from the Ro former Roman Empire, and they found that of all the pagan um, temples that once existed that we have remnants, remnants of, only, you know, really small percentage were actually destroyed by the, um, by rampaging Christians. Like, for example, in Gaul only, which is now France, only 2.7% um, of the pagan temples were destroyed by all violence, and that includes, that could also include, you know, the barbarian invasions, too. I gotta tell you too. Um, the fact that the matter their narrative oh. is that the big bad church caused it all, but the constant goth and barbarian invasions and the vandals and the rampage of Attila the Hun had nothing to do with that, right? Yeah, right. And also the the article I'm referring to here is um, an archaeological article called "The Archaeology of Late Antiqu Antiquity of Paganism," and it goes into you know the um that link the pagan temple stuff. Braz, did you want to add anything? Will you send me that link, Robert? Yeah. Um, you know, my knowledge of the Roman history is not all that vast, but I do say, like, the probably the only point they, they may have is on the Theodicus. Um, yeah. He was sort of he was sort of a dick, and yeah. you know, and he did some bad stuff. Right, and I'm not dying. And I'm not he denying that there were stuff. religious persecution. Go, what, Robert? Please make your point. Oh, and I'm not denying that there weren't religious persecution done by, you know, some rogue Christians. However, it's also not true that the pagans were tolerant, as Don Baker just said here. The pagans were really intolerant of different groups of people, like Christians, like um, Jews, like um, the Bashanal cult and the Druids. What, what I can tell you, the truth of the matter is, is that there are always religious conflicts. One of the biggest lies, of course, is that the atheists will claim that they don't cause religious conflict and that so therefore somehow 
uh, atheism is better. But as we have seen time and time again, when atheists get in charge, repression of religion is what they always go to. And we have case after case of secular atheists, officially atheist governments, torturing people, murdering people. And I don't want to hear any more about it's just communists because Mussolini was big on it, too, as a radical atheist. That's part of his history. Um, and we have records of atheist groups going all the way back to like Athens and the Greek city states of atheists being a problem, tearing apart temples and wanting to tear down the gods. Um, the ancients considered atheism a form of madness because they wanted to destroy the gods and want and, and, well, and, and problems. Huh? In, in, in Cambodia, in Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge during their vicious militant atheist anti-religious campaign, Virtually, like, 99.7% of all the Buddhist pagodas, which are Buddhist temples, were destroyed by the Khmer Rouge. Yeah, and they were using it because they wanted to wipe out religion. So it's an atheist ideology from people who are against religion. So, yes, you do have to own this, gentlemen. You're part of a movement that is known to commit genocide and torture. And those of us who won't be atheist with you have every right to notice. And we don't have to care if you're offended. In fact, go ahead and be offended. The truth of the matter is atheism directly correlates with murder, torture, rape, and uh, totalitarian oppression of the worst sort, not just communists either. Um, so, you know, any claim you have to being more tolerant, when you are sitting there giving demonstrably fake history, propaganda history to your audience. The same, French, the same French historian who um, concluded that Pol Pot was actually a Buddhist and Hitler was a Catholic and Stalin was the way he was because he was brought up in the Russian Orthodox Church. These are not credible historians. None of them are. It's, it's ridiculous listening to this ideological bilge from people who pretend they have no ideology. I'm sorry. Yeah, when, we're done, when we're done here, I'll provide links to everything I'm saying. Yeah, please do provide me with those links. We'll put them in the low bar, but it's easy to... And by the way, pagans would re repress Christians. Christians would repress pagans. Uh, Jews would repress Christians. Christians would repress Jews. Pretty much most of us agree that's not a good thing. But you can stop pretending that atheists are immune from that mix because they're not. Okay. Should we keep going? I think we probably should. How long are we going on this? We're going to about the 15-minute mark. All right. Let's keep going. Because they had so many variations of Christianity in only one. Um, and so these, these right, Christian sir. minorities ended up being, being persecuted as well. So thus began a centuries-long persecution, torture, execution of non-Christians. Um, St. Thomas. Excuse me, but um, when it wasn't Christians, every religious group, in athe including atheists, has repressed religious groups, sometimes brutally. Uh, sometimes you can look at it and even say they have a good reason, like it's a crazy death cult of some sort, a real one that's into human sacrifice or that is highly destructive and goes around destroying things like the atheist movement back in ancient Greece was noted for doing. I got a source on that if someone makes well, ask me to find it. Um, religious intolerance happens and atheists are the biggest, most m m most uh, are the biggest offenders when it comes to religious intolerance. Um, I want you to put yourself in the docket when you're uh, inviting the rest of humanity, sir. Um, and I don't want to hear, I would never do that. Yeah, I think you'd stand silent if it was happening here, though. In fact, I, I think you do, because Christians are routinely, nowadays, in parts of this country, hideously mistreated, denied jobs, um, have their reputation smeared, are driven off the Internet by atheist bullies. Um, and don't pretend you don't know that that happens, because it has. And I've got witnesses who have been victims, more than one. Um, religious intolerance is a serious atheist problem. There's a lot of people who felt the sting of atheism. And they, complete, and, they conveniently, and they conveniently leave out the part where Christians were persecuted and picking up from the wicked Constantine. And Constantine was, he even uh, was part of a, of a sect of Christianity, the Aryans, um, um, and, and Christians didn't fight among themselves, but that's, you know, to suddenly have this atheist pretend he's, a, he's an advocate for religious minorities, when in fact he's, his, he's part of a movement that's hateful toward all religion, uh, I, see, I see nothing but more hypocrisy here. 
from a cult movement. And yes, sir, I do think you're in a cult. I, I li literally mean that, and I'll be happy to explain it to you as a former atheist who's not even bothering to tell you to come to Jesus. I'm simply telling you, you're in an insane cult. You ought to get out. And if Just I my may, advice. No, if, I, they'll, if they'll let you out. Huh? If I also may add something, like, you know, I just remembered this, but there was, like, you know, before Christianity really took off, there was persecution by pagans on the Jews and everything. That's yeah. part of where, you know, Jesus gets crucified. Yeah. Yep, and various other religions fight. I mean, right now the Hindus in in uh, India in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan really hate Christians at the moment. It happens, um, and and these things have to be dealt with. Please present the peer reviewed studies which demonstrate that if we're all atheists, we you know all that would stop. Because from what I can see from the historical record, empirically, it looks like when we let atheists in charge, we get a lot more mayhem, not less. Well, they point out like uh, countries like um, <clears throat> Sweden and other places are more peaceful because they're uh, more uh, secular. But like uh, places like uh, Switzerland and Aus Austria are more religious and they're doing better off than them. And actually, if we look at places like Sweden, it turns out that the government's been lying about the rape problem over there and the violence problem. And it looks like a lot of European governments have been lying about the violence problem, and Europe is turning into a war zone. It only took what secular anti-Christian government, what, 30, 40 years to completely destroy Europe, European civilization? Because that seems to be what's happening right now. And in these Sweden, people probably want us to blame the Muslims. Huh? In, Sweden, in Sweden, also arms dictators, they sell a shit ton of weaponry to tin horn dictatorships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, I may point out like places like Estonia, Lat Latvia, I can't pronounce it, and North Latvia. Korea. Latvia. Uh, you know, like, you know, Estonia, Latvia, whatever. Latvia. North Korea. All right. They all have, like, despite being really low, have a low percentage of believers, Estonia is the most, like, the least religious, and it has the highest murder rates in Europe. Yeah, that's not uncommon. Also, the higher the rate of atheism, the higher the rates of suicide and quite a few other mental health problems. We got documentation on that. Anybody want to see it? By the way, we're still suspended on Twitter for offending somebody. Would somebody please be sure to tweet this out to Matt Dillahunty and the Atheist Experience folks? I don't expect them to answer it, but I will mention that if they do... I have ideas that for things you all could, you guys could all be doing besides atheism, because really, have you not figured out yet that the market for atheism has crashed really bad and is not likely to come back because y'all don't make any damn sense? Because you don't. Well, yeah, they'll defend. They'll like a uh, no matter who he debates, his loyal dogs will just stick by him all the uh, way. I, I will donate like, money. His debate with the like with his debate with Jordan Pearson. I will donate money if you will recreate the the, the stoic religion. Atheism is just dumb, guys. Really, it is. Oh, my God, please become a Hindu. You'll at least be interesting. I at least have Hindu friends I care about and love. Uh, you Start would at least be interested. Huh? Start worshiping Perun. <laughs> I'm afraid you broke up there. Start worshiping what? Oh, sorry. Um, Start worshiping Perun. Perun? I don't even know what that is, but... Um, the... the oh Slavic deity that was the um, amalgamation of Zeus, Odin, Thor, and the prophet Elijah. Well, that's got to be better. I, at least you'll have some sort of standard beyond your own ego and your own ability to rationalize things. I mean, really, the God of AA makes more sense than this. Holy shit, man. Okay, um, let's play a little more. Let's see if we can get another minute or so into this. Aquinas summed up the standard medieval position as when he declared that the obstinate heretics deserved not only to be separated from the church, but also eliminated from the world by death. And so this is, this is how, what which happens when you have church. Which obstinate heretics? Citation needed. Why do I suspect it has something to do with violent ones? Because there was a problem with violent heretics. Nonviolent heretics were usually uh, tolerated for quite some time. Um, if not their whole lives. It was the violent ones that usually got uh, that kind of treatment. In All fact, right. 
during Aquinas's day, it was common for there to be Jews and Muslims coming around and people who were not particularly religious. And you would also occasionally see witches and people in, you know, well, if not witches, people in other religions and soothsayers and that. And they were all broadly tolerated in Aquinas's time unless they were being a huge social disruption. And usually, by the way, it was the secular authorities who made that determination and then would ask the church for their advice. And that's where they well, would I mean, get. Well, hell, like, you know, for the Inquisition times, like there would be people that would blasphemy just to, just so they could get to the church instead of the secular government, because the secular government was much harsher than the church. Oh, that's a good point, too. Bloody, bloody, the, the worst period of the Inquisition. First, let's put out that the Inquisition, uh, uh, during its 400-year legacy, executed fewer people per cap for, per year than the state of Texas does per capita. It wasn't that many. Furthermore, many of those people, you know, you had to be pretty close to the church and to be accused of church corruption. It wasn't generally enough just to be a non-Christian. You had to be lying about what you believed and who you were. Third, he's right. It was the secular government, the king, the crown that one of these heretics executed um, because the crown felt they were disruptive. Um, and in fact, if you weren't tried by the execution, by, by the Inquisition, it's exactly like Brest just said. If you, were, if you were caught by the secular authorities and you weren't going to the church first, you would usually get a worse trial and worse treatment. Just like he said, sometimes they would try to get themselves tried by the church and make themselves out to be religious heretics just to get out of trouble with the secular authorities. All of this is part of this complicated history that you don't want to talk about. You just want to blame the big bad Christians for. And it's, it's annoying. Um, what, do you ever have the guts to have a real conversation about this and be challenged about your claims, your sources, sir? Ugh. Good Lord. You're yeah, doing nothing going. but indoctrinating people with all right, faith. All right, keep going. all right, all right, all right. Hey, I'm being nicer, aren't I? I really am. Yeah, you, are. Are, you are. But we got to keep it that way. Mistake mixed. For Christianity, suppression was a failure, and the truth really has nothing to fear from alternative views. But dogma requires active suppression of those views in order Not to keep true. the dogma alive. Citation Murder and torture may allow you to get your way, but it has nothing to do with love or treating human life as sacred, which is a you know bit of modern propaganda. You don't believe life is sacred, sir. You don't believe anything sacred. Ultimately, supp the suppression failed. Many of the variations of Christianity and other religions still endure today, such as Zoroastrianism and Islam. Those those are other religions that were persecuted, but but made it out. A couple of them didn't make it out. Kafar. Catharism and Mithraism, uh, you know, is the world better without them? I'm, I'm not so sure. So many people today uh, view the separation of church and state as a hallmark of a civilized society. So it seems like they've kind of lost that battle in the long run. Uh, not really. Quite a few of us, a growing sentiment because of the ideological atheist bullying we've seen in our secular schools in our secular court system and et cetera, quite a few people out there are starting to say, you know what, maybe we should amend the constitution and just go ahead and declare ourselves a Christian nation. And at this point, you know, even five years ago, I would have thought that was a crazy idea, but given all the atheist indoctrination and atheist bullying in the culture, I begin to think it's a good idea. By the way, I will mention to you again, there is a being televised that is still happening and it's not just America. It's all over North America, it's all over Europe and it's only going to keep growing. I'm sorry, did anybody else want to add anything? The United Kingdom is officially a Christian country, but yet yeah, they have a large percentage of Muslims and Sikhs and Hindus. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed, I noticed how too there he tried to say these other, you know, fringe Christian groups that got suppressed that the world might be better off with them. Really? I thought you guys hated all religions. You're just saying these other Christian groups would be good to still have around. It was, like very, it was very selective. They Just like when they complain and bitch and moan about God's cruelty in the Old Testament, but they totally ignore all the other gods. Who yeah. act I tell you what, or, or they, they ignore the inherent cruelty of a, of a random causeless universe driven by blind uh, laws of physics that just go that way because they do. And uh, there's no cruelty inherent in that, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if we can do a little more. 
The Crusades is the next one I want to talk about. Uh, the Crusades is the mil a set of religious military campaigns initially to take back the Holy Lands, Jerusalem from the mu Muslims. There were six thrusts over 200 years from 1095 to 1291, and hundreds of thousands of Christians became crusaders and were given plenary indulgences by the Catholic Church in confrontation. And this is sort of a, a little bit more than a pat on the head. Uh, it was kind of a forgiving of, of, of sins and, and uh, of, uh, of penance and these sorts of things. That, Gross generalization. Um, I'm sure a lot of the, the, the folks thought it was uh, a free trip to heaven. So there's a little debate about what that really meant. Um, they killed those that got in their way, including the Cathars, the Jews, the Byzantines, the Muslims, pretty much anybody. All right, let's back up a little bit. Uh, first on the indulgences thing. Now, there have been indulgence abuses, but the actual purpose of the indulgent, even during those crusades, was supposed to be, the assumption was that they would not be able to get back to confession, and it was understood that in times of war, you might do things or find yourself in the heat of battle, the heat of passion, whatever, you might do things that are considered sinful. So what, what was supposed to be happening is that they were all given an indulgence so that they would be forgiven until they could come home and confess anything bad they actually did or could get to a priest. They were given that, you know, the spirit of that was given so that it could be like that, so they could be go off and fight and not be afraid that they wouldn't have the benefit of the sacraments if they died. There were real abuses to that. And there were people who also misheard their instructions. And by the way, uh, history also records the Vatican sending messages out saying many, many times to crusaders saying to stop knocking, to knock off the excesses. And that, you know, these indulgences aren't supposed to be used to give you an excuse to do whatever you want. There were multiple dispatches out of the Vatican like that. And, 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 and honestly, what's worst of all about that is he which of course some of them might have believed it was but theologically that's not correct but if there were no indulgences they would just be out there slaughtering anyway i mean people who went to war purely for conquest they did that all the time with or without a papal blessing i'm sorry does anybody else want to say anything about that yeah i'll also yes. point out that they make this seem like it's a whole big religious deal when yes there was religious influence in it but what they don't fail to realize is that the Pope at the time was trying to gain more power for authority because he had already he had been working at a state of recovery because he had to battle like hard to get the position that he was currently in and thought that by starting the first crusade that he could expand his his, his authority further. And, yeah, the, and the, I want to point out the first, the first I want to point out. Yeah, yeah, and I want to point out that the Crusades weren't just in the Levant, you know, as everyone thinks, you know, with like Saladin and King Richard the Lionheart. There were also Crusades in the Mediterranean, like uh, Malta and Sicily and all that. There were Crusades oh, yeah. in Spain, and also, there were Crusades on the Balkan against pagans. Yeah, they also like to bitch about the Crusades, but don't, they don't say a peep about Genghis Khan's rampage, which was worse than all the Crusades combined. They don't say a word about oh, Christians being game. attacked. They don't say a word about Christians being tortured, taken into slavery, mutilated. They don't say a word about any of that. They don't say anything about the fact that Christians in the East at Constantinople were frantically uh, sending messages begging for help. I mean, now, don't get me wrong, uh, especially in the Fourth Crusades, there was some stuff that caused bad blood between the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholics. But, I mean, the history very clearly shows is that, you know, the Christians in the East there were asking for help. There were a few times when they got the help and it was like, eh, you stop helping. You're not doing it right. I, mean, I grant that. That's some bad history there. But for the most part, they were asking for the help because they needed it. Yeah, the, fir the first crusade was triggered by a request for assistance by the Byzantines after the Turks took a large part of uh, Turkey. Yeah. And when you look at the crusade movement as a whole, when you look at the crusade movement as a whole, you see that it's largely a reactive force. You see that yeah, it's, it's, the military, it's, a, it's a military objective was to liberate the holy places in Palestine. Well, in, and here's the thing. I'm talking about the whole, yeah. I want to speak real quick. And I'm talking about the whole crusade movement as a whole, like including the Baltic, including the Mediterranean and Levant. It was overall a reactive force because um, the all the crusades that occurred against the Muslims on the Mediterranean and um, 
Levant fronts were um, reactive to the um, earlier Muslim conquest, and the Crusades that occurred on the um, against the Balts um, were reactive against the Viking raids that had occurred earlier. The fact of the matter is Christians had developed an entire thing called just war theory, which per- pretty much, I mean, maybe not the first, but one of the first and certainly the most serious uh, theories as to when is it is acceptable to go to war and when it is not and what conduct is acceptable in war and what is not. And that is an unusual thing for Christians because uh, uh, in other religions, including atheism, the whole idea that you would have limits on war uh, is just like, why? Why wouldn't you go and kill your enemies and take all their stuff? Why not? If I also may, you know, if I also may add, you know, to give Muslims a little bit of a rub too, they also had concepts of like that just war too, where they, they like do. They read, actually. they read into the Quran where, you know, in order for, you know, in order for you to even be able to, go up to some place to in order to conquer them or whatever you would have to have you'd have to have a range of you'd have to fulfill a range of uh, you know trying to word it you'd have to have these conditions met in order for you to be allowed to even think about going to war yeah the fact of the well, matter that end all, also ahead. the what's interesting too about the Christy, the ones where it was you know muslims versus christians that there were points where there was there were Muslims who fought for the Christian armies and Muslims or and Christians who fought for the Islamic caliphates. That happened too, and that's just part of the historical record, right? Because the Crusades had a political a element record. to them. They had a political and ethnic element to them. What'd you say, Brass? Yeah, I mean, like you know, there was some messed up things the Pope did. Like, yeah. um, you know, he used a lot of propaganda where he. Like we know, we know it now to be false. What he was, some of it was doing, because you know he wanted to make Muslims seem a lot worse, uh, worse. So it would be, e- you know, to dehumanize them, so it would be easier for, you know, his men to kill them. Well, but, he may have even be- he may have even believed some of the propaganda because that happens. But yeah, it happened. And by the way, like um, yeah, if there was any actual. If there was any part of Europe that saw some kind of actual threat from Muslim forces, it was in Spain. And yet just 30 some years before the first crusade that Pope Alexander II tried to stir up some enthusiasm to assist the Christian kingdoms there and got a minimal response. Like, uh, like there's no great sense of some Muslim threat to Western Europe, nor were the crusades driven to destroy Islam per se or fighting them over there. So we don't have to fight them here like W. Bush style rhetoric. None of that was happening, actually. Yeah, none of that was happening. I would also add in support of a point others have made. I'm going to do this, and there's some Christians who get mad at me, and some others get mad at me, and I don't care. Muslims generally tend to be less violent than the godless. And Muslims, I mean, do not get me wrong. Islam has a more warlike heritage, and it has a far greater tolerance for warlike behavior. It does. That said, um, they, it is still absolutely true that they have strong rules about what's allowable in warfare and what is not, what's allowable in how you treat captives and how, what's not, even what's allowable in how you treat slaves if you take them. They have rules. Atheist regimes, godless regimes, and we have numerous examples, not just one or two communist regimes, but numerous examples of godless regimes that do worse across the board. Um, I even have Muslims I've talked to who've told me they perceive the radical secularist militant atheists as a mutual threat for Christians, Jews, Muslims, and everybody else. You guys might want to notice that, by the way, people of multiple religious traditions and none at all are starting to look at you atheist ideologues with your generalizations about religion and ask the simple question, and do atheists look any better than these religions? And when you look at that question, guys, you don't look so good. I, I, as a former atheist, I like my Hindu and my Mormon and, 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 and my deist friends better than you guys. All right, we got to keep going. All right, let's keep going. And they sacked and pillaged, and eventually, uh, 200 years or so, they did nice capture Jerusalem. Thank you. Well, the Crusades are kind of a failure as well, even though they, they got the Holy Lands. Um, they had a lot of poor military coordination due to the feudal cultural differences of the different 
different sort of tribes effectively, shifting alliance, allegiances between them, and arist arist aristocrat noblemen desiring of fame, wealth, and glory, uh, not, not wanting to take, uh, take orders from other people. So the banner of God didn't make them an effective military force, and it took 200 years to do this. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, it also shows how wealth and power are a driving force of Christianity. Think of the Holy Lands as a pilgrimage what? moneymaker. Think of a Jesus Disneyland. All right, stop it here. Stop it here. Oh, I want to say something. Oh, oh, I want to say something. Are, 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 uh, uh, in other words, you're not saying – you're saying – Wealth and a conquest drive Christianity rather than the real historical reality is that the Christians were the only ones who said it would be morally wrong to go to war that way. Go ahead, oh, Robert. Um, what was I going to say? Um, he mentioned something about um. Oh God, I just lost my train of thought. Oh no, he said the Crusades were a failure. No, that's not true. The Crusades overall were was a highly successful movement. The ones in the Mediterranean and Spain were highly successful. The ones in the Baltic were successful, were highly successful as well, albeit very brutal. And even the ones in the Levant were also su successful in the sense that they thwarted off or, um, later Arab invasions from that region. So that's complete bullshit that the Crusades were a failure. <laughs> and also, like, you know, people, you know, hate to admit it, but wars do tend to drive progress. Because generally what people will try to do is they'll try to come up with technology in order to conquer their enemies. So you'll end up getting a bunch of different ideas spanning out. You'll get philosophy and stuff like that for the whole purpose of, you know, of making... Yeah, a lot of technology came out of World War Two. Yeah, so I mean, like, that's how it all works out with any war, generally. And the Crusades were no different. Uh, there was some hardships that did end up happening because of it. But there was also, you know, the mixing of Muslim and Christian philosophies and technology also came from it, too. And there were times where Christian leaders and Muslim leaders respected each other, like um, King Saladin, or not, cheese, King Richard the Lionheart and Saladin. <laughs> they had a mutual respect so, for one another. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so, you know, to say, that, that, you know, to say they're unsuccessful is sort of, you know, just bad history. Yeah, and it's to totally ignore the other, you know, crusade fronts like the um like the Baltic and the Spain and um the Mediterranean. Also, he mentioned the um pilgrimage, you know, as being what what, what do you say Jesus money making or something like that? That's not true. There were at any given time there were only 140,000 Latin Christian settlers from Europe who went to um the whole the Holy Land as pilgrim as pilgrimage. Um, you know, and that was a very, very small percentage of your, of the European Christian population. Which was, I, I believe like around 40 to 100 million at the time. Oh, like Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. He's at Jesus Disneyland. But yeah, it's still, my, my point still stands. Look. Shall we go ahead and keep rolling? Yeah, let's keep rolling. See if we can get money out of the pilgrims that are going to go there and, 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 you know, Check out all the all the the, the wonderful things in in uh, in the Holy Land, and so this and shows how Christianity is placing material things above human life. And there was a motto during the Crusades: "Kill them all, the Lord will recognize His own." And ironically, now the Holy Lands are under Israel, under primarily Jewish rule. So that that kind of uh, ended up doing something completely different. The next thing I want to talk about briefly is the destruction of knowledge. Now, book burning is not necessarily a religious thing, uh, although religions tend to do this or have done this uh, as a way of suppressing heretical ideas through the centuries. Uh, book burnings in the Dark Ages were just, just another way to destroy the pagan cultures or the heretic cultures yeah. to make room for Never Christianity. And often, Christian instead of just burning books, why not burn entire libraries? And why not burn the people that wrote the books or are guarding the books? Is he lying about the White House at Alexandria again, how Christians supposedly burned that? That bastard. That, 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 was, that wasn't even the great li <clears throat> library that was destroyed. That was the Serapium. I, oh, yeah. I, that, that was the one you going to bring up. Came. I, this was like a gish gallop. It's another atheist gish gallop. Just yeah, make yeah I'm a, a atheist communist. Never burn books and destroy oh, none. Uh, yeah, atheist fascists never burn books like Mussolini. Yeah, they did. 
um, atheists themselves uh, go go go. Uh, have, have never uh, tried to censor people. I've had multiple attempts from atheists to censor me. I've got some still bragging that they're trying to get me taken out. Um, and uh, if I also uh, so made something, atheist tolerance, huh? If I also may note something, the only reason why we have pagan, some of the pagan authors and stuff and books that we have today, like the works of Plato and more, like the only reason why we have some of those works is because pious Christian monks copied them down and saved them. It's, like, it's, you know, the, the only reason we have tons of stuff on lots of religion is because the church preserved them. Um, including stuff on contemporary religions that they didn't get along that much with, but they kept their stuff anyway. It's still a grand tradition. You know, even the Bantu philosophy in Africa, um, there was a regrettable, arguably regrettable incident where Christians burned some some instructions on human sacrifice they discovered uh, among the Bantu there. But but other than that, no, the Christians were were uh, and still are preserving the Bantu philosophy. I I. I <laughs> Think how many. Um, oh, yeah, um, I want to say something. I think how, how many paintings and um, artifacts from the Catholic Church that were destroyed by the French revolutionaries during the brutal de-Christianization campaign of the French Revolution. Oh, that's a good point. Anti-Christian atheists during the French Revolution burned a lot of stuff, didn't they? Um, it's just one of many examples of atheists behaving that way. Atheists love to destroy ideas they don't like. That's a very uh, observable trait about atheists in groups, sir. I see it all the time. See it all the time on the Internet, among your co-religionists. By the way, you're full of it if you say your atheism is not a religion. It's very obviously a religion with dogmas, doctrines, and uh, lack of any tolerance for heresy. And very obvious about the, 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 the religion that you know American atheists and the atheist experience promotes. You're, you're, you're promoting that, Go ahead, Brass. Speak up, note, Brass. Speak up, Brass. All right. I'd say another thing I'd also like to note is that people yeah. like Justin Martyr, Oregon, Clement of Alexandria, Basil, etc., all these people promoted learning pagan literature and studying philosophy from the pagans. These were great and famous Christians who are still revered as some of the most influential in Christian history that he's naming there. Yep. It's absolutely so, I mean, this, whole thing, this whole thing that they did, they suppressed the, the pagans. No, they, they, in fact, they used some of the philosophy and then redid it to, to improve it. And, and then they'll, these guys will go around and claim we stole the philosophy. It's, it's ludicrous from start to finish what they're doing here. Um, uh, they are simply lying about history. And sir, you should be ashamed. You're you're literally making your audience dumber with demonstrably false assertions about history. You're literally brainwashing and indoctrinating people who don't know better. By the way, you're probably brainwashed and indoctrinated too, just so you know. And yeah, I really think you are, just so you know. It's not even Dillahunty we're answering here. We haven't really taken on Dillahunty yet, have we? We're more, more doing this, really guy. Speak in this one. He doesn't really speak in this one. Oh, see now. Oh, that's all right. We'll get to one just from Matt one of these days, assuming he doesn't get out of the atheist gig. And by the way, as a, as somebody who apostatized out, Matt, I'm telling you, if you can find a way, get out if they'll let you. I know a lot of people have trouble leaving because they get in trouble if they try. All right. Let's uh, let's let's play another minute or so of this. That sort of thing. So that happened, too. So we have uh, the destruction of the Library of Alexandria. The Library of Alexandria oh, was the greatest library. knowledge in the ancient world. It was oh, a cultural educational hub open to all from the, and uh, let's see, in the third century, uh, no, it, it, was, it was created in the third century bef before the Common Era and lasted until 391 in the Common Era, so, so 600 years or so, uh, when it was destroyed by Christians. <laughs> Again, you know, it wasn't the the so-called it wasn't this great, you know, library of, of Alexandria. It was at the time it was a pagan temple to, you know, what like White Engine said yeah, to the Seraphim. Yeah. Piss, I believe it was, you know, one of the Greco-Egyptian gods. 
Serapis, the the deity that Atlas invented, who was a synchronization of Hades, Osiris, and with the attributes of the Atlas bull. Yeah, yeah. That the most historians agree that the Library of Alexandria wasn't destroyed by rampaging Christians, but by um, who was that? J- Julius Kaiser during his Alexandrian campaign, he set fire to his own ships as a, kind of a scorched earth policy. And the rest you know, just kind of gradually died out over time. But even then, many of the books that were in scrolls that were in the so-called Library of Alexandria were shipped off to, you know, what would be the Eastern Roman Empire, a.k.a. the Byzantine Empire, where they would pre- be preserved under Eastern Christendom. OK, we got someone called Madman says, and I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. He says, that's odd. I was taught in school, in school that many of Plato's works pres- were preserved by Christian monks but not copied, and humanists at the time had to do a lot of tricks to get them. They completely and totally lied to you 100% madman from space. I'm sorry, they did. That is easily debunked pseudo-history, and they lie from top to bottom. I will suggest again well, the book. Man- God's, well, I mean, two man- God's, <laughs> How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization. God's philosophers, and I have more books than that if you want them. So don't have anybody sending saying, he did, he did, he did books. I can give you dozens more if I have to. You were lied to, well, madman. He wasn't being mean. He wasn't being mean. He wasn't being mean, I don't think so. Um, Maybe probably. This whole thing I, I, comes from Edward Gibbons, who was, you know, and who was a, po- a polemist who had an anti Christian bias that was spreading this. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Aristotle, you know, uh, Platonic philosophy, Plato's philosophy was massively influential on the Christian world, including all during the mythical, non-existent, non-age, uh, dark ages. Um, and, and, and Platonism was actually the most dominant philosophy among Christians until Aquinas, who was a big fiend for Aristotle at the universities the Christians had built where they taught pagan philosophy to everybody. And in fact, when Aquinas got started, a lot of people looked down on him for being into Aristotle because they really thought Plato and Plato type (laughs) philosophers were superior in the (laughs) massive university system that they built to spread uh, uh, knowledge of this uh, (laughs) pagan philosophy. (laughs) You're making so much noise. Oh, okay. I just muted you. Um, Again, no. In fact, Christian theology was vastly and hugely and universally informed by Plato until uh, until Aquinas showed up, and then it became much more influenced by Aristotle. Um, but no, Christians were openly teaching pagan philosophers for two thousand years, and some of the earliest Christian apologists among the Romans were trained philosophers like Justin Martyr like Augustine, like Polycarp, like Catherine of Alexandria, and others. No, Christians have been embracing same uh, so-called pagan philosophy from day one and have never stopped. I'm sorry if this guy that we're responding to comes from an uneducated uh, fundamentalist tradition, um, but although I would say he's no more uneducated on this than the average person raised in an atheist house is, um, no, the, the history is very clear. And I, again, I got way more references than those two books. But I mean, oh. if I'm not going to just even look at those two books, why should I keep going? Um, oh, the the I, whole picture I mean, of history this man is giving is lies from top to bottom. And I'm not being hyperbolic. He's simply making crap up that's easily debunked. What are you going to say, Brass? I was going to say, like, the temple that there, we're, we were actually talking about, like, that was the second one, the Serapina. I can't pronounce that one, but the um, Serapium. Yeah, but that was the second one. The first one, which I think they're talking about, was the the Musian, um, something like that, was dedicated to the the nine um, muses. You know, C- um, Celo, Urena, Come, Calippi, your Tipperary. You know, all the they were to the muses. Which like is, the, you know, their, their conception of the great library bears very little resemblance to any historical actuality. Like it was a shrine with scholars attached to it, not a secular university. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then most of the, you know, the scrolls and books that were, or, you know, scrolls that were in there, even I, I believe even, even before Julius Kaiser, you know, destroyed it with his scorched earth policy in his war campaign, 
like I said, you know, most of the scrolls were shipped off to what would be the Eastern Roman Empire and now become Byzantium, which was ruled by Christendom, Eastern it's Christendom. Its scholars were far more concerned with poetry, t- textual analysis, grammar, and uh, rhetoric than anything we would see as science. Yeah, although they had a lot of science going on, they didn't have a separation of the sciences. And arguably, by the way, when we completely separated the sciences from philosophy and theology, science began to decline. I can actually show, we can actually show now that there's real evidence that as soon as the scientific naturalists came in, scientific progress actually started to grind to a halt. And scientific naturalists, a.k.a. ideological atheists in the so-called natural sciences, have presided over a complete meltdown of the peer review system in only about 50 years of them being in charge of it? No, but it hurts their right. It uh, supports their narrative that the big bad Christians did it. How are we? Yeah, gonna, really. I, I, I'll uh, never stop calling them on it. What? Go ahead. The pagans were like, damn, Christians. How are we going to get to the moon now? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Um, the you know, idea uh, that it reminds me. What? I love how. I love how during the space race, I know we're kind of going back to more modern times. I love how during the space race, the Soviet Union sent, you know, who was it, Yuri Gagarin up to space. And, you know, he allegedly, although he didn't actually, he allegedly said, you know, I see no God up here. However, during the, I believe the early 1970s, when we sent our man to the, not only just to space, but to the moon, they were reading Bible scripture. (laughs) From orbit, too, yeah. And by the way, him saying, I see no God up there, very typical communist ideological line. Just so so anybody who's listening knows, intelligent Christians going back 2,000 years have believed that God is logic itself and that God is what's responsible for the laws of physics and probability, that God literally runs the laws of physics and probability, which is why it is impossible for science and religion to be in conflict most of the time, unless there's a moral question. At least in the keep going. It's also why Christians tend to be really good at science. And science keep came out in the West. Hang on, in the Christian West. All right, let's go go another minute or so of this. Emperor Theodosius uh, again mentioned uh, issued a decree blanding all religions other than Christianity and Christian groups under the bishop Bishop Theo, Theophilus burnt the, the the library in 391, thus ending the library as a public institution. Later, one of the curators and scholars of, uh, and philosopher Hypatia was murdered. She, uh, she was also associated with the library and uh, murdered, mutilated, and dismembered by Christian mob in 451. And thus, she became the first martyr to science. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That, was, that was a lie. That was a total lie. Go ahead. Take him apart. I can't say anything. I'll just get mad. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Who wants to take that? Yeah. Hypatia wasn't – the thing about Hypatia is that she wasn't exactly murdered for being, you know, oh, she was, you know, this great, you know, woman scientist. She she was murdered because she just so happened to be – basically be at the wrong place at the wrong time. There was a conflict between um, Christians and pagans, and the pagans had, I believe, murdered a, a couple – one, if not a couple, Christians – and so, you know, there were some redemptive, redemptive violence committed against and, by you know, Christians. You know, and what we always find is like there was actually Christians that mourned her death. Like one um, of her students, was the bishop, I believe, was yeah. um, you know, mourned her. She was very well loved by Christians, and that taught them. Yeah. And they it, they said yeah, that it was her, her politics that got her, not her, not the not her science. Yeah, yeah, and many of the Christians, you know, later, you know, when they would symbolize the martyr, the Christian martyrs of ancient Rome, they would actually use her as an image because she was chaste, yeah, like, so, you know. I mean, she wasn't killed for her science. In fact, you know, she was, um, and they always make her seem like that she's this atheist or skeptic. No, she was more, she believed in God. She was like, um, she was like a Platonist. A lot of what she believed in, too, was... A lot of what she believed in, too, was um, also, like, not correct and was pseudoscientific. Like, she was an ardent student of Ptolemaic um, geocentrism, contrary to that, to that one crappy movie called Agora. Oh, yeah, she wasn't, that, that piece of propaganda. Like, that was um, – <laughs> I mean, I mean it, was, uh, it was well shot. It, was, it wasn't bad of a movie. It was just pure propaganda. Like, um, they had her coming up with a Kepler's, Kepler's model. 
Yeah. Did they really? Yeah, she wasn't covering Kepler's model before Kepler. Kepler. Oh. She was she was an ardent student of geocentrism. By the way, Kepler was one of those guys that proved that that Galileo was wrong, and Galileo was wrong. By the way, just 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 thought I'd throw that out there in case he goes to that. Should we just keep going, or is there more we got to say? We know there were periods where Christians behaved badly. You find that out from Christian historians, if you'd just be honest about it, sir. Maybe if you, you know, came from a a, a more rigorous. I forgot to give you a um a link. Uh, Tim O'Neill covers this very well. Oh, Tim O'Neill, who's an atheist, who by the way does not like us, and that's okay. Uh, we don't like we don't have to like him either. Uh, don't hate him or anything. But... I think he likes me, though. Know. <laughs> well, good. I hope he does. Um, uh, he's doing something that I think uh, won't work. Um, because he seems to think atheism is something other than a cult political network, but it is in fact a cult political network, and it's a political as well as religious ideology. New atheism is. Well, it is, and 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 make better atheists. I'm sorry, they make the atheists they do using hate propaganda, is what I would say to Tim O'Neill. He still hasn't figured out this is a is a movement that is driven by profit and ideology, and it is driven by hate propaganda. They don't want you fixing their hate propaganda, Professor O'Neill. Is he a professor? I can't remember. No. Yeah, let's play a little more of this. There's another a little little vignette that's, that's kind of, I think, instructional, and that is um, there was this, uh, this document found that was the uh, Archimedes Palimpsest, it was a document originally uh, contained a number of works of Archimedes. Archimedes lived in uh, 200 BCE, and some of his works were copied along the way, and this particular copy was made in uh, 950 AD in Byzantium. The, the, the uh, Christians got a hold of this thing and said, oh, paper! And so they scraped off the ink and washed, oh, washed it clean by so monks in, in 1229 for, for reuse. And they used it as a litur liturgical text for religious services. And this document was discovered in, in this last century. And the original content was re reconstructed using modern techniques, different, different types so of light waves and these sorts of things. And uh, they found... Um, in it. I'm going to address that one right there. That's incredibly dishonest on a lot of levels, um, and that's just kind of what I expect out of atheist history. Um, and let's be clear, this is ideological atheist history right here. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that that palimpsest was found more or less on accident, sir, because the ancient world was filled with old scrolls that had anything on them from grocery lists to useless, you know, scribblings from students uh, to old, basically old paper because people would keep these around for centuries because it was expensive and it was very common to take an old scroll like that and scratch it off because you assumed you couldn't read it, but it was just some old scroll and you just assumed it had nothing important on it because you didn't know what you were reading. And yes, occasionally in archaeology, we find somebody like that, some student or some monk had some scroll in his hands that was actually, you know, one lost copy of something that used to have thousands of copies, and he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know what its significance is. He just thinks it's another old scroll, an old, old palimpsest, and scratches it off and makes new use out of it. Um, historians right. find that all the time. And by the way, it's not just church sources that happens in. All kinds of secular sources, too. They'll find some... And then they'll scratch it off, you know, from five centuries ago, and then they'll scratch it off, and then they'll find some Greek text on there that no one at the time knew what it was, because that's that was common with these kinds of documents. I'm sorry, go ahead, Robert. I was going to say the monk was basically doing, you know, what would be, a, you know, the equivalent of, you know, recycling bottles or cans. Um, the, what was I going to say? He didn't even know what he had, almost certainly, because that's if, common. Well, go ahead. If Vanti if Vanti didn't know any anything about ancient Greek or Roman learning, they know that the well, Christians believe, destroyed it. Well, I believe that they did know that what it was, it's just at the time there were so many of those kind of, um, those kind of manuscripts that, you know, they could afford to recycle them. Like I believe the Alchemides um, pamphlet set itself was actually a copy of a 10th century version of the Alchemides pamphlet set. Tim O'Neill did it, had an excellent, um, article on this that I'll link in the in the um, comments when we're done. 
and we'll make sure to put that in the low bar after we're done and to make sure Oda gets that for the blog when we post it. Um, again, we owe virtually uh, all of our knowledge of Archimedes to, a, you know, to like a bust of interest in him in the sixth century by scholars in the Eastern Roman Empire. Christians really took more to him. And that's the reason why we really have anything on him. I, I, he, I mean, literally, they are relying on a, uh, something that anybody who's trained on ancient history would be able to call them out on. But their gullible audience that joins this cult that, that they're in doesn't know how to challenge them. Palm sets and scrolls that were of, of, of ancient origin were common all over the place. There were thousands of them laying all over the place. And sometimes you had something ancient and people didn't recognize anymore what it was. That's all this story amounts to. In fact, Christians put a high priority. Read a book called, here's another one. I, we've recommended a few. I'll throw out yet another one um, called, uh, how, oh, it's called How the Irish Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill. But it could just as easily be said, how, you know, the Irish monks saved uh, civilization. Um, because for quite a long period of time, Ireland was isolated up there way up in the northwest of Europe and not a lot of people fighting over it. So monks in monasteries doing their Christian duty spent centuries preserving and copying ancient pagan manuscripts on, from, on math and philosophy and science and history and poetry, pagan stuff. And they were preserving it and they were the only ones doing it in many cases. Um, and they were doing it all part of, as all part of their Christian mission. Uh, uh, he's completely lying about the history here. And I don't even know if he's lying because he's probably buying whatever propaganda has been put in front of him because he got recruited from his weird primitive uh, fundamentalist Christianity into this weird cult network of atheists. And by the way, I'm going to repeat, sir, you're in a cult. It's very obvious, Mr. Baker, that you're in a cult and well indoctrinated by saying. Let's see if we can get a couple more minutes of this done. And we're almost done. Uh, all sorts of interesting uh, um, works of Archimedes, one of which was, this is the only copy, and this copy is called The Me Method of Mechanical Theorems, which is really the initial discovery of integral calculus. So imagine back in, you know, 200 yeah, yeah, yeah. BCE, integral calculus was invented, not in the 17th century when we think it was. And... If, if we had only, if, if anybody along the way had any, any smarts or knew what, what, what they really had in their, in their pocket, um, you know, how much better the world would be with this thing. But, but yet it was, it was, you know, sort of savage for the paper that it was contained on. So that's, that's uh, kind of, I think, in, in, in one little vignette sums up the whole mindset of, of, of this, get rid of all the old knowledge because it's, it's, not, it's not good for Jesus or whatever. So the destruction of knowledge is a failure too. Everybody is poor for, for that. And the suppression of truth doesn't succeed in the long run. Eventually it comes out. And it shows the evil nature of Christianity. If knowledge and truth are at odds with Christianity, then Christianity is clear and is a false religion. Very simple. Prove your extraordinary so, claim. I, I, I literally, uh, did anybody want to comment on any of that? Sure, we'll just let the last 30 seconds or so play out. Let's just let Christianity it ruled the world. It was. It really showed his. I'm sorry. What, Robert? I just wanted to say that just wasn't true. What he said that you know the Alchemides papal set, you know the one he's talking about here was the only one. You know, like I said, the one he's talking about was actually based on a ten on a I believe a 10th century version of the Alchemides papal set. And that the evil nature of Christianity does love your enemy. He who lives by the sword will die by the sword. Ring any bells. Why should we also, why should we not consider atheism evil when um, they simply lie about things like this and we, we could show the atheist record of uh, persecution, torture, uh, censorship? Uh, again, you're talking to somebody, you're listening to somebody right now who's faced atheist censorship and still faces censorship threats on a regular basis from ideological atheists. You know, other members of your cult religion, which, by the way, I'm going to repeat, you're in a cult religion, obviously one. Um, like, okay. uh, don't you don't you know don't you find it odd that whenever anti theists talk about history and of science, it's almost always based on uh, Christianity being vilified? Yep, 
it's it's very 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 noticeable um and, and like it's also that, very very easily debunked about 98 percent of the time what do you got there brass yeah and like you know there was a summary of like you know there was like plenty of um archimedes um works like his uh, transmissions of scholars that used it such as um Eot um eotosis and uh and amias isidore and leo and many others you know there was plenty of people that were copying it there was just some copies like you know they had, they scraped it off that was just a common practice back then yeah even to say yeah even to say it was the only one is not accurate um what would be happen is is that things like this pamphlet set would be copied over and over and over again and sent all over the place and then over the centuries sometimes interest in one or particular work or another would wane and people would forget about it as different things would happen over the centuries and so you know older copies might disappear and then someone finds one oh this was popular for a few centuries and then everybody forgot about it oh look we found one buried under this shopping list on this on this on this scroll um this is just right, part of like normal Huh? Well, it would be like if you had um twelve computers and you took six of them, and you know, and the other the other six computers got old and weary, and you just dumped them at some dump, and then you know, then uh, you know, a hundred years later, they discover you know at least one of them is still intact, and you know, you yeah. get what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I do actually. It would be just like uh, two hundred years from now, somebody finds a compact disc install copy of windows 98 there were probably millions of those at one time certainly millions of them yeah, and they're getting yeah, increasingly rare and scarce. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. getting increasingly rare and scarce but 200 years from now someone might find one and go oh look what i found an original windows 95 disc well the yeah. christian must have, the christian must have attempted to, to suppress that max <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They destroyed all copies of Windows 95, but we managed to find one in a in a dumpster that they they did. Uh, it's the and same thing. Science, science and technology could have been. Think of what the hell that could have been today if the church had not done this. We would have a uh, we'd be living on Mars and cities in the sky and all that. Good Lord, it's it's so pathetic. Again, yeah, let's go ahead and finish off. We wanted to get through 1528, so here we go. Let's let's get the last 45 seconds or so true nature people were persecuted knowledge was destroyed wealth and power mattered over all else and it was the dark ages and that's a failure of christianity all right and that's the 24th that's failure the 24th of christianity yeah. um i don't know if there's a limit to the num number of failures that we could discover <laughs> um, no there aren't so it's a good thing you're keeping count right because you never know um, might be added a while. Could be, you know, we could like, like this is the 486 <laughs> and final failure <laughs> of Christianity, only because Christianity no longer exists. It stopped uh, failing. No. It stopped failing, right? On October 4th. Um, thank you so much. I, uh, I yeah, we got to do an actual Matt Dillahunty video one of these times because it's he's fairly apparent that as one of the ringleaders in this strange religious cult that he's a big figure in. He just ate that shit up with a spoon. I am quite certain you could come up with thousands more so-called failures, sir, simply because you've made up most of the ones you've presented here. So I'm sure you can continue making up supposed failures uh, for the rest of your life. It seems to be what both your careers are at this point based on. I have a real serious question for Matt and Don here. It's Don, right? Yeah. Matt and Don here. What happens to your income stream if you finally, if one day you just decide, you know what? I actually think there might be an afterlife and I think there might be something to the whole God thing. I think there just really might. What happens to your income stream in your career? And what do your friends there at Atheist Experience do to you? Because I've talked to other people who've tried to leave the Atheist Network and they have real similar stories about being persecuted, bad mouth, mistreated, and, uh, and even worse. So I really want to know: Are free? Are people? Are free? Are people free to leave your network and become something that's not an atheist? I really would like an answer to that question. Um, I want to see. And if I bring some people who are former atheists with me to talk about experiences with you, will you t hear them out? Just curious. Go ahead, uh, uh, Robert. 
Don and you know Matt here said that this was the 24th failure of Christianity. I would say that this video they did was the first major, if not biggest, blunder failure on their their entire show. So this is failure number one of the atheist experience. <laughs> we'll start doing to them what they do to Christianity. <laughs> yeah, no lie. Uh, you're not even a Christian. Um, neither's brass. Um, I, I see. And no, this okay. is coming from. This is coming from someone who has a, a quasi Christian, quasi Buddhist background due to, due to my ex. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's uh, uh, let's have final thoughts. Uh, who wants to put a final thought out there? Because we're going to close this up. Nobody. Oh, I, I think I might have a f- final thought. Well, I just kind of said it. You know, this was this was the first failure of the atheist atheist experience. So. Final yeah. thought there. Is, you know, I can't wait to debunk more. This is why you should be skeptic of people that say that they are skeptics. You really should be. Um, and you should learn to be skeptical of the assertions they make and to really check them with more than Wikipedia links or links to Rational Wiki or the Freedom from Atheism Foundation or some obscure Holocaust uh, website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Engine, did you have any closing thoughts you wanted to add? Oh, uh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, that's all right, because this was just one long gish gallop of easily debunked historical claims that can be skewered easily by anybody with real historical knowledge. We have received, we have, we have uh, given multiple references, and in case somebody from this, uh, you know, this group's, this cult group's fanboys say, you didn't give enough references, that reference wasn't good enough, that reference is good enough, that gets a tint. As- oh, yeah, like in his debate with Spiral Philosophy, he gave studies where Matt didn't, he just relied on his feelings. I, I, we've given references, good ones, with copious, from, from, from completely credible mainstream sources, thoroughly cited, and furthermore, for the record, we have far more references that back up the same points we've made available upon request if you're honestly asking. I do get tired of agencies. Leave- they didn't support their claim. Yes, we did. And, and, and we made and it I'll clear. Leave- hmm? And I'll leave links to everything that I've said in the comment section. So. And- and much more important, though, a, a disingenuous atheist trick is to just sniff at the references and act like they're not enough. So let's be honest here. We have more references than this. We're not here to, to be on a dog and pony show. These, this man, Don Baker, just gave a, a, a 10, 15 minute uh, historical uh, lecture, every part of which was riddled with lie after lie after lie. And I don't know how... He- Well, Hunty's got no excuse, as far as I'm concerned, not to know how much of this is bullshit, which, you know, leads to questions about Matt Dillahunty's integrity, as well as the integrity of any organization he's a member of. He, he, um, he didn't even question him. Of course, why would he? He just gave a bunch of easily, easily proven false assertions. And, and used they do this for a living. Huh? And you know, and use references from a non-historian for history. Non-credible references, uh, lopsided history. It's, it's all so very common. And then, of course, what they like to do is play victim when we get angry. The only thing I'll say here, though, is that no Christians have every right to be angry, and they have every right to be lied about so egregiously. And when the general public is being lied to and miseducated with fake history easily shown to be fake, American atheists, you publish fake stuff, you're liars, and you are easily shown to be liars. Not because I'm Catholic, not even because I'm a Christian, but because you are easily simply shown to be saying two plus two equal five. You're lying. It's oh, despicable. It's now, I would also like to say to Don Baker, Don Baker, I dare you to come talk to me sometime about the rational basis of, of the idea of God and even about Christianity. It's clear you don't know much about it because you came from a dumb hick, uh, fundamentalist Christian background. And by the way, I don't care if I've offended anybody by using that phrasing. 
Um, there are some very stupid and miseducated Christians out there, usually in some kind of really primitive, really badly educated sola scriptura background with no actual formal training in theology, history, or philosophy, which any decent preacher should have. Don Baker, you know nothing about Christianity, and you just spent gave a 10, 15-minute lecture of easily proven, disproven bilge. Are you going to do anything to correct the historical record? And are you going to learn anything about Christianity other than the primitive, poorly educated, uh, almost certainly sola scriptura fundamentalist background you came from? <laughs> do you really think he's lying or just mistaken? Uh, I, and I would love to have it. It becomes it become love... an open question because when you're doing this professionally, um, and when you're given materials that you could easily question and you're taking it, and, you know, I assume he takes money for this. I assume he makes his living somewhat at it. Joe Hunt, he certainly does. Uh, uh, at what point do you become a liar? And at, at what point do you lose the ability to say, I was just ignorant? Well, at some point, there's such a thing as inexcusable ignorance. All of those, I mean, how long has he been doing this would be my question. Because he'd been doing it more than a year or two. It qualifies as lie because he's had ample opportunity you know, it's definitely what I'd say about a guy no, like that. No, Delonte's been doing this since the late 90s. He's been At you know, least. He's, he's had tw Don Baker has had 20 years to figure out that everything he just said there is easily disproven hate propaganda. Easily disproven. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I would, I would, have a, I would love to have a historical d discussion with him. Why? That's my challenge to him. Well, okay. You want to have a historical – okay. I, I'm uh, immediately skeptical because I don't think you'll have any kind of discussion with him. He doesn't know anything about history, but maybe I'm just being arrogant. So we'll put it out there and uh, I'll host it here or you can host it wherever else you want and I'll just promote it. I want to see if he'll do it. I doubt if he will. Dillahunt was a Christian for uh, 25 years and his uh, sickle fans just jump on his bandwagon as if he now possesses the truth. Well, wait, and wait, in order to defend Matt on that one, I, you know, I will give them the hit this. He did say that he didn't, you know, become instantly smarter by becoming an atheist. He'll admit that. Huh. He'll just say that, um, you know, so, you know, that's a small caveat. I will say that he has said that in the past. Well, good. His co-religionists don't act like that. His co-religionists, and it is a religion, Matt, um, often think they're instant smarter and psychology and science experts just because they're atheists now. It's one of the most common annoying uh, atheist cultist traits, that tendency to think you're an armchair, you're a psychology expert, empowered to render diagnosis at will from the power from, from behind your keyboard. Pow, I have my diagnosis of you. Pow, I have my diagnosis of you. Well, a lot, a lot of the times, uh, a, lot, a lot of the times he's one of the, uh, lesser douchey ones, but he has his days. The yeah. bottom line is he's a major figure in an organization that publishes demonstrably fake history and demonstrably lies to his audience. He has he's been doing this for decades. He has no excuse anymore not to correct the record, and I don't think he will. Um, and that's because this is a cult, and he's a cult leader. These are both these are two cult leaders making their money selling what is easily shown to be like, I, I was about to compare it to Amway or, or something, except Amway actually makes products that work. Um, these guys don't have anything they're selling except hatred and hate propaganda. And, and I'm a, sorry if and they don't like my saying so. And he's a feminist. Oh, of course he is. Um, uh, uh, by the way, feminism is also a hate movement, and I'll be happy to have that conversation with you too as an ex-feminist -ex who's dealt with just how hateful and nasty feminists can be, feminist men as well as women. Um, but that's another conversation in another show. The oh, fact of the matter is this man is factually, you know, these people are factually lying. So, all right, well, we have put out what we have put up. Uh, we have other things going on. John Wright will be here tomorrow night. Um, we're also going to be uh, interviewing Micah Curtis, um, uh, uh, the, the geek uh, culture guy. I'm looking forward to him. He'll be here on Thursday. Uh, we're doing something with Godless Cranium on Saturday. I forget what it is, but um, we, we seem to be getting along with him again. You're I supposed to be debating some guy on his podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, plus on the 25th on um, on the, uh, the non-sequitur show, I'm going to be, be, be debating Christian anarchist on Calvinism. 
because he's a Calvinist and I don't believe in Calvinism. So that 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 should oh, you're Calvinist. He's a Southern Baptist, I think. I uh, uh, yeah. Well, oh, they're welcoming you. It should be fun. I'm they're welcoming you. Huh? That's the worst. Comment. They're welcoming you. Well, the, the, the non sequitur show has agreed to let me and Godless, uh, or me and, uh, sorry, Christian Anarchist. Yeah, non sequitur show is going to have us do that. Hopefully, that means that, you know, the great debate community is moving on beyond just having argue, atheist arguments and, and doing something else, which will be good for them. So, I mean, I just mentioned that'll be happening. Uh, like I said, John C. Wright will be here tomorrow, Mark, Micah Curtis on. Thursday. I got nothing for Friday, so I keep thinking we need to do a nerd stream one of these days. Oh, also in the can, I have an interview with Karma Carrier um, from the OG Science Group, a molecular biologist who now does a lot of ministry work recruiting scientists um, into Christianity. He's really good at it too, and he's a very accomplished molecular biologist. Because you know that's very common for scientists to be religious, and religious scientists tend to be really good. In fact. Overall, they appear to me to be better than atheist scientists most of the time. I don't know. Maybe we could have that debate sometime. In any case, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please visit us on redpillreligion.com where we could use your financial as well as your spiritual donation. And uh, thanks for everybody who came and did this panel. We'll be back as we are every night. We're still on our background channel. Say a prayer that we get our main channel restored. Oh, yeah, we're also looking into moving into a podcast network to uh, maybe avoid having this problem in the future. Red Pill Religion, we're not going away, atheists, as skeptics, rationalists. Um, we're not going away. Um, Wait, did you really uh, – oh, yeah, Robert, did you really say this was the first um, fuck-up of the atheist experience, or were you just being sarcastic? <laughs> I think so no, actually, I like I like atheist fuck up better. The 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 yeah, I can't speak. The um atheist experience fuck up. This is the first ever atheist experience fuck up. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, Robert, get us the next one. I enjoyed your selection here. See if you can get us another one. See if you can get one with Matt. Oh, I will with Matt directly. And then after we're done with Matt Del Hunty, I think it's time we move on to bigger fish, maybe like Penn Jillette or Sam Harris, because. Every atheist in popular well, media. I don't call any of them a big fish of any kind. They, they're nobodies outside of the anti-theist circle jerk. Sam Harris still has a big audience, and it's about time he get his comeuppance, along with that, that, that filthy fraud who I used to love for decades, Penn Jillette. Um, like I said, guys, we're not going away. So please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies. And God bless everyone. Good